I am back tomorrow. With yes. Joe Ferretti in studio. We're squeeze heard, all you guys yeah. in right there. Might put him, maybe I'll put him with the Admiral. I was going to say, put him with the Admiral. Yeah, that's what we'll do. Yeah. Two on the Admiral, Mike. Get a little bench seat. Yeah. Yeah. That'll like be the that. first time we've all been in studio like that. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's, I think that might be a first. Yeah. yeah. Joe makes an, he's like the groundhog. Once a year, he makes an appearance, yeah. you know, kind of thing. <laughs> So, so to speak. Hope he sees his shadow. <laughs> uh, the uh, the Patrick Morrissey Open. I'm not picking on the Attorney General. I swear. I've just been too busy to change the Open with the candidate forums and such. So we'll be getting a, a maybe new a little one bit in there. <laughs> no, honestly. Okay. I, I, I personally, I, I like Patrick. He's been a great guest in his eight years as Attorney General. I would have preferred that he was at the candidate forum, especially since it was in his backyard. But you know, what are you going to do? He's got some good tennis stories. He does. <laughs> Very good. Uh, and I thought that the other candidates were. Uh, relatively kind to him until more Capito toward the end pointed out that uh, he wasn't there. And I thought they good, did a good job of just talking about what was important to them as opposed to bashing on uh, the person who wasn't there. And of course, the rules were such that they would mostly uh, would not appear unless there was not a lot of bashing going on back and forth. Yeah, I've said all along that the governor's candidates are all quality candidates. Um, it's not often you see that. Um, and uh, we'd be lucky to have any of them. But they have to they have to distinguish themselves from each other in some way. So it's good to have these debates. In studio, Pastor Tim Garino from the Rescue Mission back from uh, Ukraine, where we just uh, heard a story this morning about the uh, just continued cowardice of Vladimir Putin, another uh, civilian building bombed and uh, the killing of more innocent people. Yeah. Uh, not even soldiers, uh, yeah. civilians, uh, once again, and you were just there and continue to witness this stuff firsthand. When did you leave and when did you get back, Tim? Uh, I think I left on the 19th of March. I'm trying to remember. And I came back on the 7th of April. It was late. Um, came back. Um, got a lot accomplished. Was in Medova first. We helped build that house um, for a refugee family. And then from Moldova, I went over into Ukraine, and that the entire time I was in Ukraine, I think I was in Moldova for maybe 30 hours. Um, my first over there, 30 some hours, I was awake um, with no sleep, and then uh, the next day we hit the ground with doing the house there and stuff, and then uh, got on a plane, flew into uh, Warsaw, and then the next day um, met with uh, Craig from Church Leadership. Uh, development international we headed into ukraine and spend the rest of the time in there and we were on the front lines some of the pictures i that's why i came early i gave him the colin to put up on the thing that's that's where we were literally on the front line the entire time all the cities um we were when i called in here i had to apologize to you guys because um we were with the uh, we were in a situation where we couldn't do a lot of picture taking and a lot of stuff because um we were sort of surrounded by military because of where we were and it was very difficult and um, we were constantly on the move and driving i think we put in 2500 miles just in um uh the ukraine area and then i put another i think they they totaled up all my trains and planes and automobiles and vans i think it was like 6500 miles Jeez. traveled um in the in about three weeks or so um saw a lot Saw a lot of bad things, saw a lot of good things. Um, they're doing great stuff through the churches there. There's a group of guys, the pictures there of, of uh, five guys. They're pastors. They, those guys there um, are on the front line. They probably, some of them will probably be killed in the second invasion that's coming. Um, they are literally um, staying and helping with their churches. We did a lot of water filtration systems, took a lot of food aid, took a lot of stuff in to the literally on the front line. Uh, the one picture there where it's Nicopole, where across the river is the is the nuclear power plant. Um, that's where we were um, literally we were getting artillery shelled the entire time. We were there. Um, they used the artillery. That's Nicopole right there. And then across the, the, the river, it's literally a river. You could almost walk across it. Um, I don't think you'd want to because they'd probably uh, kill you in the process. <laughs> but that's how four miles was the closest we got to the Russian front, and they were ar artillerying Nikopol the entire time. Nikopol is a city of about 130, 140,000. When we were there, it's about a, a city right now of 30,000 people. Hmm. That's how many people have left. Um, constantly getting shelled. Um, we put in a water filtration system there while we were doing that. Um, 
it's just the people there, the spirit there. Um, I'm not going to get into the politics. You guys did enough of that this week. <laughs> you know, uh, here, here's the saying when you're over there. And, and, man, please don't get offended if you're out there. If you do get offended, oh, well, your problem. Uh, where, where we were at, they used the term, and you know this from the military, we, we were in where the politicians don't go. We were there, you know. In the, it's not a place you go and get your picture taken when they're when they're heaving uh, right. shells at you and, and drones and rock. <laughs> and so uh, we're on the ground. There's things that happen. I saw there's places we went into where there was uh, the, the bombings and all kinds of stuff happened that weren't reported back here where the Russians are killing civilians, like you just said. They're, they're doing the scorch earth. But let me tell you something, the Ukrainian people and, 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 and what's going on there, the Christians, the churches, they're doing it. That's why the, those five pastors have, um, uh, um, uh, they're like, they have price on their heads from the Russians. The Russians have said they will kill those pastors because they're, they're the ones doing it. They're staying there. They're feeding the people. They're taking care of things. Um, the one pastor on in that picture, uh, Sasha, is, uh, they call him Pastor Alex. He was captured the first time in the first offense. The Russians kept him for three days. Which one is he in the picture of five we're looking at? Today? Right there, right where you got your arrow on, right, okay, there. right there. That that gentleman right there. He was captured and tortured by the Russians. Um, these guys, what, what people don't understand is these guys are old enough to remember communism. They don't realize, right. a lot of people in this country don't realize, you know, the wall fell in the 90s and, and in the 89 and 90s. And these guys were, you know, grew up under communism. They don't want to go back. They know what communism is, not what's taught in our colleges, not the garbage that's taught here and people think it's a great thing. Yeah. They know what it is. And they know, they know, and, they, and they're willing, many of them guys will stay on the front when the Russians come on. Kharkiv, I got a text Thursday night. But one of the uh, pastors and, and friend there, and, and they said they're, they're evacuating 47 villages around Kharkiv because the Russians are setting up to come in and take that city. Uh, Zep, Zep, I can't even pronounce half the names that I was, the cities I was in there, like this long. Zeporoza, we were in that city. Um, there's a pit, not that one, but there's another picture of the one that we're there, that, in that area. They're coming in that area. They're, we were down in Odessa um, where they just um, bombed, uh, uh, Ukraine did an offensive on Crimea. Um, Odessa is the only one that's open. The Russians are looking at, they're putting in dragon teeth in Odessa. You know what dragon teeth are. Mm, okay. No. They're um, these huge pillars. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, they put okay. them in the ground. It's 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 so when the tanks and the troops come up, mm -hmm. it, it it stops them and sure. it basically can fire back. They're there. They they don't want our troops. Okay, everybody I talk to, they don't want our our men and women. They want our equipment. They want to fight the war. They want to win this war. They do not want to become a communistic state again. They they are. It, it is a fight against evil and good. I know people don't see it that way with all the politics. But when you see what they're doing, how they're killing people, um, I showed up. I didn't put these pictures up, but they're cinerary bombs. They, the Russians drop them in with parachutes, and on them they're cinerary, and they and they blow up, and they burn people. It's fire raining down on people. They burn them to death. I mean, the Russians are coming in with a scorched mentality. There is a picture up there of a field of of rockets that are, that that came down and they stuck in the field. And there's a picture. Where is that picture at? Where did he get it? He didn't get it up there. Okay. But there's rockets in the field that they dropped in and the rockets didn't go off. The rockets are about this big. They're white. They landed into the ground. And, and then there's a minefield that I, I gave, uh, I think I gave him or didn't give him the pictures. When the Russians, uh, and when I was first there in Nikolai, uh, I didn't realize how close I was to the front in Nikolai when I was f my first trip there. Um, because we went in into the dark of the night. We were getting shelled. We couldn't move around. My first day there. Um, what happened was um, Nikolai, uh, when the, the Russians, that was the Russian front there for a while. And then when they pulled back and the, uh, Ukraine got the rest of that property, they mined the fields. Yeah, so, and on 60 Minutes, they did a piece on this. And, and these aren't the, the landmines you're thinking of. Uh, so many of these are just a couple of ounces and they drop them from planes yep. like, uh, mm -hmm. like butterflies, basically. Yep. And there's just thousands of them everywhere. Yep. So, and it, it's amazing how much it's going to take 
Uh, even if Ukraine is able to beat back the Russians and keep them out, it's amazing how many years it's going to take to find all these mines. Yeah, because and, they're, and, it, they could be under a leaf. Yeah, and they and they did it on purpose because they want to kill as many people as possible. So if you if you're a farmer and you go back out in the field, you could you could you could blow up, you could be killed, you can die. I mean, it's it's just it it's it's very evil what they're doing. They're not just going after soldiers. They they want to scorch the earth. Have but, you talked to the military commanders that are out there? Yes. Okay. Yes. So for them, yeah, we'll stipulate. Yes, it's it's a it's a battle of good against evil. But wars are won with with tactics. Yeah. By beating back the other guy. Mm -hmm. um, the Putin has made it clear, at least in his in his, in his rhetoric, that he's not going to quit. Yeah. So. Is it just, uh, and, and he's laying siege to the the uh, Ukrainian cities. So with the equipment, if, if the United States and, and the world were to provide all the munitions that Ukraine needed, is there, can they push them back? And where do they push them back to? And, and how do they convince <clears throat> Putin to quit? <clears throat> um, they, they can push them back. They have, they've proven that. They've done that. Just like I shared with you about my first visit. My first visit two years ago where Nikolai was the Russian front, literally the front. If you look at the map. a lot of entrenchment that's yeah, happened since then. Yeah, and, and pushed back. But um, they have also don't have the equipment and the artillery and all the other stuff to fight back. Just like they just hit, uh, they just hit Crimea and they were able to prove that they can hit and, and do some damage. They hit another place in, uh, in Russia at some kind of factory. They just hit Ukraine. So Ukraine can do it. They, they just don't have the equipment, the weapons to do it. Um, if they had it, like, here's, here's where I come from. And, and I know it's political and, and I, people, I got to be careful because then people get all crazy. Um, I had people call me when I was over there and they're like, um, I don't want my money going to this instead to the rent. I said, no, no, I, I'm on a missions trip. The people that gave me the money to come over here had nothing to do with the rescue mission. Okay, it's like it being in a church sure. where you have missionaries that raise money and that money goes just for that trip over there. And so um, I hear what you're saying, but to see it and to see the spirit of the people and the fighting of the people, it's remember, remember this war when it started, Russia was supposed to take it, win it in two weeks. Right. I mean, it was supposed to be over in two weeks. Sure. Okay. They're fighting an army. They're fighting a nation that doesn't have a military, that they threw it together at the last minute here. And they're not winning like it was supposed to happen. And so, and, and, and Ukraine at any time, it's like when we were in Vietnam and Cambodia, we kept promising the Cambodians we were going to do this, we were going to do that, and we didn't. Right. Okay. And then they came in and they were wiped out. Um, the same with Poland in World War II. We kept telling them we were going to come in, we we're going to supply them. I mean, over and over again, I just think it, it, they're not asking for our troops. They're asking for weapons. Okay? We, let's be honest here. Let's be honest here because I have friends in the intel community and, and a lot of, okay, we supply a lot of other countries sure. <laughs> with weapons. Some countries are so backwards, it's not even funny that we supply with weapons. And why aren't we supplying why, I mean, here's real, true, good and evil going on. Putin says he's going to fight forever, but that's what a politician tells you. Okay, it's just like a politician tells you they're going to give you a tax cut. They cut your taxes here, but then over here they raise your taxes. Right. Okay, so if you want to, <laughs> and, and, and if you want to get political, and Mike was in the military and so was I, okay, and, and then, then being what I've done since I've been in the ministry, in the front lines of war, seeing real war, seeing the fight and the spirit of people, these people want to win. They do not want to go back to communism. And I don't know how I can stress that enough because that for many people is all that matters. So what is keeping, right? Uh, the, there's no way I'll be able to pronounce the cities. Yeah, I um, can't pronounce the, any of them. <laughs> the, the, the picture you showed, yeah. uh, assuming it's it's oriented by the compass, there's a an east-west river mm -hmm. that is separating the, the Russians from the Ukrainians. Mm -hmm. What's keeping the Russians today? How are the Ukrainians holding the Russians off from just crossing the river and moving on? Because the, the uh, um, casualties. How many, how many casualties does the Russian army want to take? And is right now what they're just they're just pummeling. It's it's a scorched earth. Yeah, it, it's it's they're doing it by artillery. And, you know, Putin says one thing. Putin says one thing, but on the ground, it's a whole other thing. The Russian, the Russian, the regular Russian army. I'll just be honest with you. Doesn't want to fight this war. 
Okay, the right, the right, when they have, they have tiers, what they call the Russian army, then they have the Chechnyans. And the Chechnyans are sitting back here, so when the Russian army, uh, uh, what's the term, runs away from the war, they shoot them. Okay? Ah. So, how many casualties do you want? Many of the Russian, the real, uh, the heart of the Russian army is not to fight this war because it's like a civil war. They're fighting against their, sure. their, their relatives. The, the Russian army, the heart of the Russian army, that's why they're bringing in the Chesnians. That's why they opened up the jails. That's why they opened up the prisons. They're bringing in all these other people who have nothing to lose and everything to gain to fight this war. But the real Russian army is like, you know what? We really don't want to fight this war. So how, how many casualties do you want? So they have to. So Putin, again, a politician says one thing. It's like, it's, like, it's like our politicians saying don't. Okay? You've been over there. The only thing they understand is power. That's the only thing they understand is power and force. Okay? I'm not, I, 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 I'm not, I'm not for the politics because I get tired of it. Because when you're seeing innocent people, like you're talking about today, where they, where they bombed again another, in, uh, they're, they're doing the scorch earth. They're killing the innocent because they're trying to break the spirit of Ukraine. The problem is the more that they do that, they're not breaking the spirit. They're actually firing up the spirit. Emboldening. Embo there you go. Thank yeah. you. Emboldening the Ukrainians. They're very prideful. They do not want to lose this war. They do not want to become communists again. I, 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 you can't stress that enough. And, and, I mean, in this country, people look at communism, oh, well, it's, it's a, just another idea. No, it, it, maybe I'm wrong in saying this, and you're a hit more of a historian than I am, but communism in the last 100 years has killed more people than anybody. Millions, and, and, yeah. hundreds of millions. Thank you, thank you, yes. thank you. Because I said it on, on, on another uh, program, and somebody said, no, that's not true. I said, no, it is true. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. And, don't and, don't and, go on those other programs. Yeah. <laughs> but but my, my point is, my point is, it, people don't see that today because that's not what's taught anymore and, and, and the nonsense that's taught. And yet when you go over there and, and, you, and you see the spirit in the... I mean, there's people as old as me over there fighting the war. I mean, when I went over, that's the first thing they said to me. So you're here to join us. Um, yeah. No. <laughs> I'm an observer. I mean, it was so surreal. We're watching stuff go on, take place. I can't even tell... I can't on the radio tell you all the places I was at and what I saw. Because we were right up front seeing it firsthand. I even turned to the guy that I was with and I said, isn't this, because he was an army, uh, he speaks Russian fluently, he was trained at, in Monterey, uh, served from 88 to 92. I looked at him and I said, isn't this so, we're so real? We're literally standing here watching the war go. And I'm like, I mean, we're up front and close. I mean, you, you get any closer, <laughs> we would have to carry a weapon. But I'm just saying, but the churches and the Christians up there, they're taking the biggest hits because they're the ones bringing in the aid. They're the ones staying. They're the ones fighting. They're the ones giving the food to get bringing the water in. And the Russians have said, "We will take them out. We will take them out first. We'll kill the pastors. We'll kill. We'll, we'll come in. It's the churches that are. It's the Christians that are bringing in the aids. It's 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 amazing when you go into a town like like Nikopol, which is 130, 140, now there's only maybe 30,000 people. Probably half of those people are in churches or more. And they're and they're, you know, keeping this the spirit going the how, entire time. How desperately low are the supplies for the Ukrainians right now? Uh, very low. Uh, I I not not good at all. And that's why when they make the hits, they can only do so many hits, but they can't do the follow up. Mm -hmm. It would be great if they had the weapons where you hit it and then you come. And you know, it's in the military. You hit it and then you hit it again right. and then you hit it. That's what the Russians are doing. They just have endless supply. Of, of ammo and they're getting it from the Chinese or getting it from all over they can just keep hitting you hitting you hitting you and <clears throat> they know when they bring in the troops they're gonna lose more than the Ukrainians that's why I mean one again one thing Putin is talk 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 and I'm not saying he's not backing up what he's saying but he's also calculating how many more men can I lose because back home sooner or later it's gonna explode on them you're only gonna it's like Vietnam here where we lost so many people and then back home we we lost the war here, not there. Right. You know, and it's and it's the same thing with Russia right now. They're kind of juggling because their people, the heart for the real Russian army doesn't want to fight this war. Pastor Tim Garino has uh, been our guest here in this half hour. Tim, as uh, we get ready to wrap up this segment of the program, what would you like our uh, our audience and our community members to do in this particular situation, if anything? I. I mean, uh, there's there's some great organizations. Um, 
that are over there for God's Children International. Uh, the one that's the one organization I was with, and then um, uh, Church Leadership Development International. Those organizations they've been on the front lines. They've been there. Both of those organizations have actually been there since '92. They were there when the walls fell. They went in. They've been working there, so they know the system. They know the people. Um, those organizations are great organizations to back and supply and and help. And if they're Christian organizations. They're taking the stuff to the front. Your pennies, your dimes, your dollars will not be wasted. Everything will be taken. I got to see every penny I took over there used for the people. It just didn't disappear somewhere. It was used for the people. We, uh, I showed you the pictures of the water filtration systems, which is very needed. A lot of prayer. Um, and just remember, they're real people in a real war. Uh, just like in Israel right now with with Iran and Hamas, they're they're being killed, they're being slaughtered, um, just because communism once again come in and they want to rule, they want to take over. And as you said, you backed me up. You're more of a historian than I am. Communism has killed more people in the last hundred years than any other isms out there, and yet we look at it and go, uh, no big deal. Uh, <laughs> the, the communism does not just stop and go. Well, we're happy with this. <laughs> so I just say a lot of prayer. I know you're gonna a lot of people out there are gonna disagree with me, and that's fine. You you can disagree with me all you want because I'm not running for political office. <laughs> but uh, I I would challenge you. I, I've been there, and I've been there twice, and um, three times actually, in 2006, 2007 before the war. So I know what it was before the war, and I know what it is during the war. I'm not afraid to go to those places. I'm not in shape anymore to go to those places like I used to, and um, but you know. What you hear here is not always the absolute truth. What? <laughs> so be careful what you hear and what you buy into, because just like with our wars that we fought, Vietnam, Afghanistan, um, people don't get it. It's the soldiers on the ground, the people on the ground that are fighting the war. Um, they want to win. They're yeah. not there to lose. They're not there to lose. They want to win. They don't want our people. They just want our weapons. And they just want our stuff and um, just a lot of prayer, a lot of prayer, a lot of prayer for the for the leaders of our nation. Tim, a there's, there's a, a lot of scammers out there. What's a legitimate organization or charity to contribute to to make sure your donation actually gets to the Ukrainians? Oh, I again, those two I just mentioned for God's Children International um, and um, Church Leadership Development International. Those two right there are legit. They're on the ground. Both of those guys that run those, they're like me, CEOs on the ground at the front lines, putting their lives in jeopardy. They're there. They're not, you know, back home taking pictures and doing green screens and that kind of stuff. They're literally there. Um, speak the language. Uh, been walking the ground there since 92. Both of those organizations, they're very, very well organizations support. And God bless you guys. Thank you for your, your support. Thank you. Pastor Tim Garino from the Martinsburg Union Rescue Mission just back from uh, Ukraine at 933. Yeah.